so i think from the very beginning i wanted to always uh you know uh you know be, do something that was related to aerospace engineering it started off as a pilot when i was i think 5 or 6 years old uh and then as i grew up you know it became and uh, i wanted to become an aerospace engineer uh, and that's what i pursued but uh research in particular i think that switch happened towards uh, the end of my phd where uh you know i think i've just about finished uh you know working on uh, or you know completing wrapping up my the work that i was supposed to do for my dissertation and uh, you know i just had this moment where uh i was like there is so much more to explore there's so much more to learn and so many cool things to look at uh that i think that is what really pushed me to uh pursue a career uh in aerospace engineering research so uh, yeah that would be it uh i think just the the flight part you know the how such an intricate system uh it's a heavy system uh can just uh, stay uh, you know literally like glide in the air i think the uh that is what really fascinates me even till today you know whether you know i you know whenever i'm flying uh, and i think that is what uh you know that's what pulls me towards aerospace and just like all the you know all the intricate systems that go in to make this thing uh stay up uh, i think that's the cool part about aerospace engineering that really inspires me till date Uh, I think it is very very bright uh, I think one of the big areas uh, right now I think that's particularly uh, would you know have a huge market in India is urban air mobility you know with you know the kind of traffic situations and all of that you know that you have in India uh, these urban taxis right air vehicle taxis uh, I think have a very very good market and in terms of from the aerodynamics perspective uh the whole uh, design of such a system uh and uh uh you know the whole the whole design and the flight dynamics of such a system uh is something of a very very bright and uh you know bright area that has ripe for exploration uh, uh at least you know pertaining to the indian market of course you have uh you know other fields of research include like hypersonics uh you know like really you know supersonic and hypersonic flight uh and aerodynamics um uh, but i think particularly to india i feel one of the, and uh, you know the push would be for urban and mobility and of course uh, you know the design and the flight dynamics of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles for package delivery uh and you know medical services etc Uh, I think it all comes down. I mean, on a very general level, it just comes down between for an engineer is the how versus for a researcher it's the why. So, as a researcher, I am uh, generally always looking at you know from a very fundamental level why uh, is uh, you know the flow or why the aerodynamics behaving the way they are and how is it you know and what can you do to improve it right. So, really trying to understand fundamentally. uh you know all these complex flows that take place for uh, you know aerodynamic bodies uh and uh try and see you know if how you can predict them how you can uh, uh you know model them and uh you know how you can use that to control and make these uh things a lot more efficient uh the engineer side is more on you know you have you know, you we've understood uh, the why and it's more about how you implement these things in, in and make it a reality right so it's a lot more applied uh in the sense so you take a, a research concept and you do the design of that you you take it from just a conceptual stage to an actual product uh but again i mean these days uh you know there is always a uh, you know there are a mixture of both so in fact in my research it's not just research that i do but in order to be able to get the research results that i need there's a lot of engineering work that goes into for example if i were to test set up a test rig uh it's all a lot of engineering before actually the research part comes in so there's always a mix of both but i think in a more general like i said it's more about for an engineer it's the how to implement something for some errors with it is like why is why is the thing behaving the way it is not at all uh, i think uh, so like i said uh you know i was always i actually wanted to you know once i was done i mean as a when you do your uh 
you know studies you know to become a phd it, it generally I mean, it took me around like 10 years starting from my bachelor's all the way to my phd degree i think all throughout the while i was very i was actually i thought i was very sure that i wanted to enter the industry but uh like you know i think towards the end of uh, my phd like i said i realized that i really wanted to do research uh, but as a professor it's not that research that you do over here you also have the teaching part uh which i was at you know at that point of time not really unsure about but um i think as i got in you know i had the opportunity to uh you know take you know start teaching while to you know right after i got done with my phd to just kind of explore to see if that's something that i'd like to do uh and i realized that uh, actually really enjoyed it so uh and of course you know like teaching uh directly relates back to the research that you're doing right the more uh you know like because research end of the day you go back to your fundamental concepts and in teaching you teach those fundamental concepts so i found a very good uh, you know harmony between teaching and research that was you know that was feeding into each other so my teaching would kind of you know help me go back to my fundamentals and really understand and look at my research in a different way and the research then kind of fed back into the or still feeds back into the teaching in terms of the kind of projects that i'd like to you know give to the students and so on and so forth So I think since once I found that balance uh you know I kind of knew that that's the you know this is the kind of job that I wanted to do uh but yeah all of that was more more recent uh in you know in my life Well uh I think I mean uh preparation wise I mean at least uh you know most of my teaching experience came about uh you know both in my graduate uh you know in my gra- both my graduate degrees and my masters and my phd where uh i was a teaching assistant uh i was a teaching assistant for a few courses that's where it, it all started off with but uh but then i think uh, then later on uh you know i got the opportunity to become you know to actually uh go ahead and you know build my own courses and teach my own courses where i was building the material and you know i had the freedom to uh uh deliver it the way i wanted uh i think that was more on the phd side and i think that is what really prepared me but uh, kind of going back you know more on the undergrad side like i said i was always interested in the research and you know working on like uh cool flight projects uh and i think really the the seed was really planted when uh i realized that You know, in order for you to be able to understand uh, or you to be good at what you're doing or you to, you to, for you to show that you know what you're talking about i think you have to be a good teacher only if you can explain something very well be you know that you know something uh, uh you know from you know it had a grasp of something very very well so i think that's where the seed was planted probably when i started doing research because i had to obviously you know know how to explain things the right way uh but then as i went forward you know I'm slowly building on the experience first as a teaching assistant Uh, and then later as a pro- you know teaching professor kind of built me up for uh help me become the teacher that I am today main uh uh you know advice would be to focus on fundamentals i mean as long as you're within the earth's atmosphere you are mainly governed by newton's laws so i think as long as you have a very very good grasp of physics between 9th to 12th grade physics you can become an engineer uh because i think that's one of the lessons that i learned where you know when i got into my phd i literally like there was a point of time where i you know you you do complicated research all of that stuff but really when you break a research problem down it always starts with your very very basic fundamental physics laws right uh for example like the newton's like three laws that's where it starts off from knowing how to draw a free body diagram all of those things are what really it's you know you need to really understand because all that engineering adds is you know different levels of complexities but when you break a problem down it all comes down to the fundamentals so my advice would be if you really want to pursue a successful uh and a fun career in engineering get your fundamentals right i think your your 9th to 12th grade if you're able to get your 9th to 12th grade physics uh, and you know science and math uh, uh you know concepts under you know very well understood it's not about knowing equations or uh, you know being able to recall them it's about really understanding it from a very fundamental level 
uh, and being able to recall, I uh, mean, and being able to use it the right way. Uh, if you're able to get that, then engineering is a breeze. Uh, well, I was very lucky that way. I think starting in my, you know, in my undergrad at Amrita, um, I was surrounded by a set of very, very good, uh, uh, you know, advisors. Uh, you know, my 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 associate dean at that point in time was now the dean, uh, and you know, I had a, uh, you know, I had uh, you know, a, you know, head of the robotics lab, Josh Freeman. Uh, they all really kind of pushed me for uh, you know the research. They were also very research oriented, and they they supported me a lot. So uh, I think when I was in undergrad, so it started from undergrad itself. You know, it's one thing to have the drive to do something, but it, you you also need the right of, uh, you know sort of support to be able to sustain that from the university level. And I think that was what really really helped me. So starting in undergrad. You know, I started a project, and you know, there was support from the from the university level, like from, especially from my associate dean, uh, Dr. Uh, Bal Krishna Shankar, and uh, you know, uh, Dr. Josh Freeman, who was then the head of the robotics lab, uh, and they are the ones who really sort of stood by me while you know I pursued the uh, you know the project that I did, uh, and then of course you know following uh, in you know both my masters and my PhD degree, uh, you know you have. Uh, you know, I was supported, of course, by my advisors, Michael Selig in UIUC and uh, uh, Dr. Ashok Gopal Ratnam at uh, NC State, North Carolina State University, where I did my PhD. And I think that, uh, you know, the reason for me being a professor today is all thanks to uh, Dr. Ashok uh, Gopal Ratnam, because I think he's the one who took me from uh, just trying to, you know, you know, engineer the problem to actually fundamentally understand the problem, you know, that, that sort of the mentality. And I think that is what really prepared me for, uh, you know, the job that I am uh, doing today. I think I would say, I mean, uh, I think from the very beginning, uh, it is, has always been, I think it has been different people at different uh, stages, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, again, like starting from my, uh, uh, undergraduate level, it has always been my, you know, you know Bal Krishna Shankar and you know Josh Freeman. They both have always been, uh, you know, the motiv big motivators. Uh, you know, kind of really guiding me to pursue. I think when I was in my undergrad, they were the ones who kind of pushed me to become, uh, you know, pursue research and you know apply for, uh, you know, do the projects that I was doing, apply for graduate school uh, for a higher degree. Uh, you know, because it's one thing to just know that you want to do it versus being, you know, being pushed and uh, being supported to do something like that. I think they were uh, very big, you know, support systems and inspiration at that stage. Uh, and then, you know, of course, in my PhD degree, I think the reason I'm a professor today is all thanks to my you know, PhD advisor, Dr. Gopal Ratnam, who, who's, who really kind of showed me the right way to do, uh, to, do the, to, to do be you know, the right uh, path uh, to follow and you know the right training that he gave me to become a researcher i think that's those i mean those are the advisors have really been uh you know some of my business you know have inspired me to uh pursue what i'm doing there